Neil Bibby. Thank you, President Officer. Industrial relations on Scotland's railways are at an all-time low. That is a damning indictment of a Berlioz treatment of key workers who kept Scotland moving and a damning indictment of this government too. They are leading Scotland into COP26 with growing unrest on the railways and the prospect of strikes bringing Glasgow to a halt. It is a national humiliation and a failure of leadership from this government. The Minister must get a grip and get a grip now. Why is he not intervened to ensure a satisfactory resolution to six months of RMT action and overtime bans? Will he intervene to ensure ScotRail dispute with engineers uh, who have voted overwhelmingly for strike action last week is resolved? And why does the Transport Minister believe industrial relations nosedived in these final months of the Abello contract on his watch? Minister. Uh, President, uh, officer, in regard to negotiations, these are a matter between the transport operator and the trade unions. However, um, I have had uh, a number of discussions, both with Abello and the trade unions, and encouraged every effort to be made, every constructive effort to be made, to try and resolve this situation. But we cannot continue with a situation with the funding that is going into rail at the moment. To, to make the Chamber aware, pre-pandemic, Scotland was uh, spending circa £1.1 billion a year on its railway, and that covers all aspects, including investment. Currently, because of the investment, the money we've had to put in because of the pandemic, that's risen to around £1.5 billion, uh, and that is simply not sustainable. But what we have done is encourage the unions and management to come together in a constructive way to identify efficiencies from both sides which could be used to fund reasonable pay increases and I reiterate uh, that point today. Neil Bibby. Thank the Minister for that answer. It is a matter for the operator and the trade unions but it is also a matter for the Transport Minister and the Scottish Government. The Scottish Government and taxpayers are paying ScotRail for a seven day a week service and getting six days at the moment because ScotRail does not have the workforce to cope with an overtime ban. Workers' terms and conditions are under attack. Jobs and services are being cut. ScotRail will not rule out compulsory redundancies. Key workers are not getting the fair deal they deserve, and neither are passengers who can't even get replacement bus services on a Sunday. Abello is making a mockery of this government's commitment to fair work, as are five SNP MSPs who have done nothing to resolve this dispute and who shamefully blame disruption on Scottish workers exercising their rights instead of ScotRail's intransigence. So can I ask the Minister, whose side is the government on? The workers defending their jobs and conditions and services for passengers or unreasonable bosses who in the advent of COP26 are wrecking our railways? Minister. President officer, this government is on the side of delivering a sustainable uh, rail service for the future and protecting the jobs of the employees. But this is a time for everyone to act responsibly, a time for recognising the challenges we face on the rail and finding a way to build back from the pandemic in a manner which delivers a more sustainable and efficient service which is ready to meet future demand. And everyone includes Labour. No politician can expect to be regarded as credible if they are arguing, as Labour appear to be and have been over the last week, that at a time when public finances all around face extremely significant challenges, we continue to subsidise the pre-pandemic pattern of rail service regardless of affordability and usage, and we meet the cost of pay claims without seeking to achieve that by delivering efficiencies. President Officer, uh, we all aspire to have an efficient and sustainable uh, rail service, and we all have a responsibility to help the delivery of that.